Hello, hello. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> this is Electric Vision Entertainment. I am your host, Aaliyah Knight. And on this show, we build robots, we create code, we design all sorts of technology based things. Um, I focus a bit more on hardware, but with hardware, you also have to have software so it all blends together. So that is what we do here on my show. We design technologies, we try to blend it all, make it all cohesively work together to make a fully functioning device technology or creation. Because we live in the future, why not build it? So, on this show, we're all about tech thoughts that care. We talk about science, technology, innovation, robots, creation, all different sorts of things. So, welcome. If it's your first time, glad to have you here. I am hoping, wishing that you enjoy your time here today to the point to where you decide that you want to subscribe and follow us on Twitch so that you can catch us every single week. Because every week we're going to do something cool. And it's just getting cooler. You know? Just like with anything in life, it ramps up slowly. It's a progression. And that is exactly what we do on this show. We progress. We start one point. We innovate. And we go better from there. So, um, if it's not your first time here, welcome back. Glad to see you again. Holler out in the chat. I need to make some friends here, guys. I'm trying to, like, have robot friends so that when I make, like, big, crazy droids or drones, I can send them to all my friends. Maybe we'll do something like that. I'll just make, like, a crazy big drone. And it's, like, if you're active in the community, I would, like, have the drone fly you a care package or something. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Um, but welcome back. Um, as you see from the title of today's show, we are on part four of our custom Arduino build series. Hopefully, we will finish it up today. Um, well, not hopefully. Honestly, we're going to finish it today. Whether we get all the parts moved over or not, whether we get it fully functioning, because I kind of think we might have an issue with some power. We'll get to that later. Um... But we're going to work on moving all the parts over to the board, trying to get things laid out for the most part, go from there. Um, either way, we're going to try to wrap it up today because I think we've understood the basic concepts of how to set up a board and how to get it working on a breadboard, which is probably the most important part. And then once we start moving it to a proto board, I'll lay out some of the key points, some of the key layouts of where things need to go usually. And from there, like I said, if we run out of time, we don't get everything over, we don't get it fully working, that's fine. We got down the basics of what we needed to learn. And um, if not, if we don't, then I'll finish it off camera. Next show, I'll pull it up on camera and show you what we've done. And then by next week as well, I will have to you all a tutorial slash guide or something to say how we built this and show step by step. Um, I have a few recordings, obviously, from the show, and some pictures, and a guide that I'm just working on, revising. I'll get that out to you guys, so you can work on it independently, if you do so wish. Um, as well as, probably, like, a bill of materials and everything, so you know exactly what parts you need, and tools, and etc. So, that is the plan for today, is we're going to work on moving this to the proto board. Um, we said last show, we just got everything working i'm glad we got it working because honestly i didn't know if we would get it working um so we got it working mildly surprised because there's some parts that i'm confused that they weren't <laughs> to be honest um so let's see now <clears throat> of course it's the beginning of the show so i give all my updates in the beginning because otherwise i'll forget so <laughs> I'll give you some updates um like i said we're gonna work on this one today going forward from Probably for the next couple weeks. I'm not sure how long we're going to do this. We'll see. Um, I've clearly gotten a plan. 
most likely next week is probably going to be a Raspberry Pi Center episode. Most likely. And I only say that because there are some other hardware and software requirements that I'm pretty sure I'm going to need that I'm not 100% sure I have. So hopefully I can get them in the next week. We can do a Raspberry Pi episode because as I mentioned before, they're a bit more complex than Arduinos. Arduinos um, and microcontrollers in general, they're a little more independent. You could just plug up the hardware, add code, get done. But Raspberry Pi is their entire computer systems, like a regular PC. And if you look, like I've mentioned, you know, if you look online, you can see people do custom builds of Arduinos or of Raspberry Pis where they built entire computer systems off of them. And that is the purpose. They're mini computers. Uh, so we'd have to go through the process of setting it up, adding an operating system, getting an SD card and flashing it so we could put like a hard drive type of situation going on. Um, configure it to talk to the Raspberry Pi and the machinery. It's a lot of things. So rather than trying to squeeze that into just the robots, we're going to also just do a whole episode on how to get started. Because I think once you get started, from there you're good. Especially if you have any experience with working in Bash or Terminal or Command Line, whichever phrasing. If you have experience with that, you should be perfectly fine. It's just the setup of things that takes forever. So we're going to focus on that probably next week. And then after that, we're going to work on a robot that I just finished building. I would say last night, but it was more this morning because I think I finished it at like 3 a.m. Um, you guys should help me name this robot because I am horrible at names. Anyone who knows me knows I'm horrible at names. Like if I have a bear, I call it Barry. Um, I just add Y to the end of things. Steamer, my steamer. Unofficially, it's called Steamy. So, help me come up with a name that's like cool. Um, so this robot, I showed the box last show. Oh, I don't know. It's so big. I don't know if I'm able to get it on camera. Um, I'm gonna switch my thing so you can see. But this robot I just finished last night. It was the hexapod robot that I talked about before. And let me pull it up. It's huge. I don't know if I'm going to get this all in frame. <laughs> um, this guy here. This chick. This is my girl robot. My other two are guys. This is my girl. Um, I can't tell you how I come up with that explanation. But it is what it is. So, <laughs> I just built this one. Much larger than I expected. Um, compared to the brothers, she's like three times as large and heavy. And I'm not sure how she's going to stand up. Um, I'm actually going to try to twist this up a little. Okay. So you have this huge machine. These are her legs. She can't stand up right now, unfortunately, so I can't show you her moving. She's not programmed in the slightest. Like... I couldn't even set up the Raspberry Pi because I didn't have all the like micro SD cards and adapters and all of this stuff. Um, but she's built. Her body's there. She just doesn't have a brain, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but she's hefty. She can't stand up. I'm pretty sure it's just because there's no resistance in her joints. Like imagine if you obviously have legs or arms, but like you had no control over them, they would just hang limply and that's exactly what's happening right now so um what i tried to do was record most of the process and then i honestly i started recording the leg build um so i have recordings of how to start the legs however i did a lot of the heavy lifting yesterday and completely forgot to turn the camera on so <laughs> most of the body is not recorded and uh so the plan was to do that and then kind of make like a little edited video showing how I put her together. And then that did not happen. So I, when we work on this, I will talk more in depth about how I built her. Um, there's a lot of servos, to say the least. There, each leg has three, so you can kind of see here. There's like one here, one here, one here. Um, an extreme amount of screws that stresses me out. Um, 
And then I'm not, I'm not probably going to take the top off of it at the moment, but there's some other servos like alongside. Under here, there's two that control mobility and rotation. Um, what else is on here? There's an LED module back here in the back. I'm not sure what it's for. I'm assuming just alerts and signals um, in the back. And then underneath this top here, there's the sensor control unit. I don't know if I can get an angle. No, because there's a battery pack under the bottom, so you can't see. But, flip this inside. <laughs> there's so many wires. Um, I remember Jordan, our manager slash producer for the show, who's running the channel for Make School, hint, hint, to Make School, um, mentioned that on our box, when I showed the box of the robot, I said, wiring not shown and this is why because there are wires everywhere it is confusing and i will be very surprised if i hooked everything up properly um but at the bottom we have kind of our signal uh module the springboard here it's kind of hard to see and that's where all of our servers are connect our servos are connected um so power pretty sure power is going into here and then up top where you see these attachments, this is our Raspberry Pi. So I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to take this back off in order to connect and program everything for it. Um, and then in the front, real quick, for the face, of course we have our ultrasonic sensors. We've worked with these before on the show many episodes ago. Um, we're splitting out a signal from one eye, bringing in a signal from the other in order to detect distance. That is one of the features of this robot is obstacle avoidance. So that is how it's doing that. And then the mouse, I don't know why they put it for the mouth. The mouth is a camera. So it also can see, quote unquote, and um, record videos. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. I don't remember all of the features of this robot. Um, if I put it together. So, yes, this is the uh, this is the next one. Yeah, this is the next robot we're going to be working on. Um, so I said we're going to do the if I could do that. Just edit this camera. Boom. Boom. Something like that. Um, we are going to work on this robot next. I said we have two other robots potentially to work on. One needs so much hardware work that we will, ha if I were to work on it on the show, we'll, it will be purely a debugging episode where I will sit here for hours and I will purely just, just... I wouldn't even, honestly, I wouldn't be able to even talk to you guys. I would just be purely like, where is this? Where is this? It might be like a behind the scenes type thing. I might record it and put it up later. Um, and then the other one needs, it also has a Raspberry Pi. The upside to the first one that needs hardware is the Arduino. You do it really quickly. Programming, it wouldn't be hard. We've already worked on Arduinos. Second one is fully built hardware wise, also has a Raspberry Pi, same as this build. So, that's so why I said we're going to do next week that Raspberry Pi episode first so we can learn exactly what needs to be done, what needs to be set up, which board's better than the others, um, and get a basis. And then from there, we can spend the next few days, weeks, months, <laughs> maybe not months because I'm going to get another robot after this, of course, um, working on this robot, just coding up different things, trying to get it to walk, seeing how the video input is, how... The optical avoidance works, how um, how much load it can carry when it's walking around, how... And recently, if you're in the Discord, hopefully you're in the Discord, which is make.sc, make.sc, slash, join dash Discord. Um, if you're in there, of course, we share resources with each other. Recently, I shared a resource, I'm hide, I'm hide her over here in the corner to chill. Um, hopefully she doesn't scare my neighbors. <laughs> um, if you joined our Discord, then 
you'll see people sharing resources about new technologies, uh, new software, new hardware. I myself put in a resource the other day about machine learning on a Raspberry Pi. And as a make school student, my concentration is data science, and that's mostly for the purpose of machine learning. Uh, so now I can take those concepts that I've learned for machine learning and put them onto the Raspberry Pi. And it's perfect because that's the reason I wanted to learn data science is so that I can get AI and machine learning and such and upload it onto my robots. So hopefully, maybe we'll do it on the show. I can figure out a way to get some of the concepts I've learned from making neural networks and etc. And put it onto maybe the vision of the robot or the thought process for obstacle avoidance and see if we can improve it at all. So, big things, big things coming up, hopefully. With that being said, I feel like I've talked to you for longer than I expected. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the build. Um, and we're going to go ahead and start soldering this. So I'm gonna tilt it here a little. I'll move the camera. My the zoom spot is off. Um, that's fine. So, what we're gonna do. I honestly probably should have started this a little earlier, because as you've seen on the show, and just for me talking about it, sometimes the soldering iron takes a while. Um, and actually, before I do that, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna use a different tip. Um, for ours, I've mentioned a little bit on the show that our do not. Our Soldering irons have different tips. So I have here a set of tips for this. So it kind of depends what you're doing. There's lots of different techniques for soldering. I'm just going to use the basic one. I've researched others, but I haven't really practiced them. Um, so I don't really want to try some of them right now. Maybe a little bit to a degree. Um, for instance, you know, through hole soldering, um, not through hole, surface mount, as I've mentioned before on the show, you might need a thinner tip than what we're using as a basic one because the parts are so much smaller. Similarly, if say what we're gonna do putting on this integrated circuit here, when we put this on, we're going to have a line of pins to put onto our board. And therefore, there are ways to, I believe it's called drag soldering, on the top of my head, I'm pretty sure it's what it's called, um, where I can just get it and have the solder here, solder iron here, and just kind of like whoosh down. <laughs> but I am not even remotely close to trying that out. So we're probably not going to experiment with that. Um, if in the future I've practiced it a little bit more and I feel a little more comfortable with it, then we might do that. But for the moment, probably don't want to risk a little too much. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and change the tip on this here. So unscrew it. Make sure it's not hot because it was kind of hot. Just taking off side piece, I'm taking that off. Oh, this bad boy! Well, you know I've been using it because it's all burnt up. <laughs> um, let's see which one I'm gonna use. So, like, I think from what I've researched, looking at drag slaughtering, let's take them all out. Usually drag soldering I see is this one. A little a little flatter. Has this chiseled look to it. But it's thicker as well. If you look at it, it's not like super thin skinny type thing. Um and then we have this. This would be more of a surface mount type where it's super thin, like pinpoint. 
Um, and then we have this. This might, I might try this one today. Why not? This guy is also chiseled. Um, let me pull it back. So this one's also kind of chiseled. But you can see at the tip of it is a little, almost like a paintbrush. Probably also used for drag foddering or some such. Um, I think I'm going to use this one, actually, because it seems pretty versatile. Just from my experience of soldering. So, we're going to put this guy on. I'm glad I remembered to change it before I turned it on. Because I turned it on and it already was getting hot. I touched it. Oof. I'll remember to change your tips before you heat up. Soldering iron. Look at this bad boy. Precise. Um, <laughs> I'm going to turn this on. And talk about some other stuff while it heats up. Luckily, it doesn't take horribly long because power. All right. Um, so, of course, as well, we need our sponge to be wet. I already have that. Let me see if I can put this in the frame a little more. I ordered a third desk because I need three desks <laughs> at this point and like three toolboxes and a lot of stuff. Um, probably a wrench to tighten this so it would stop coming loose. Well, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. Alright. Yeah. Got this set up. And then we're going to use our proto board. I want to try to see if I have the one that already broke off, but... I don't know where it is. So we're just going to use the same one. They're pretty cheap. You know, like $10 for two or three of these. So I'm just going to do the mention four. I'm going to split it this way. Smack them. These are useful. Um, I might have get a different design pattern personally in the future. Looking at the way this is laid out. But I think it should serve our purpose. We'll probably use these sides here for our power and ground. Um, and we're going to directly solder the wires to it. Yeah. Yeah, everything should fit on this side, power and ground. Um, I'm going to put all the important pieces on this side. So, if you look here, which you will show you see each hole has an individual metal piece around it. We're going to have that as our upside, so I can kind of not have to worry about what's going on up here in terms of where things are going. But for the back side, because we have things grouped in sets of three in the center, and then things grouped along the side, um, this is where we're going to do most of our like heavy building, our dirty work, per se. Um, the the ugly under parts that no one's going to see, well, not going to see, gonna see, but in a conventional sense, no one's going to see these. So, not going to too much worry about them. Um, yeah. Super heated. Also, I don't, okay. I was like, where did they go? Um, I talked about these as well on the last show. I made sure to get them because if I didn't get them, we can't put the circuit on. Well, we could, but then I can never use that particular integrated circuit. On any others because it's going to be soldered down to just one. Mind you, integrated circuits also aren't like horribly expensive, but of course, if I don't need to rebuy it, why would I? So instead, and it takes since that one is from a different board, then obviously I can't use that one for that board again. Um, but red, obviously. So we have these sockets here. And let's see if I have to find I hope I have one that fits because from the looks of it, I might not have one. I might just have to use two. So, <sighs> should double checks. Um, <laughs> we'll make it work. We'll make it work. If not, we'll just practice soldering some pieces on and go from there. Um, but this socket basically is so that I can 
has the pins down here on the bottom. And these are what gets soldered to the actual board. And in that way, I can get the chip and just put the chip right on top of here and insert it. And then that way later I can pull it off if you need to. So it's not as permanent. Um, I realized I ordered the wrong set of sockets. <laughs> so we're going to try to make this work. Um, worst case. We will not put the integrated circuit on and either I said I'll off air, come back and fix it and show you guys like the final version. Um, best case, I'll put like, you know, like put two in a row and just hope that that should work. It might. It look pretty similar. I think we can pull this off. Um, yeah, so I think. Seem heated up enough. Let me just grab a couple of these out because I don't know how many I might need. So let's go grab a bunch. I will say this about robotics is it's literally purely experimentation. Like I said, right now we're doing hardware mostly. Uh, I think we focused a lot more on software in the beginning, doing more hardware right now. And as we continue to move forward um we'll continue to mix them both you know as we work on more completed robots we'll might have a time we're like let's work on the software oh the software works fine what's wrong with it let's work on the hardware and then keep that back and forth going like that um so what i'm gonna do here is first i'm gonna get my helping hands because i'm not gonna hold this obviously with my hands while i work that would be crazy um, and I will burn myself. And let's see if I can do a quick thing real quick. I need this hand. Live shows and live edits, all part of the plan. Let's do this. Let me make sure I can try to get everything in frame as closely as possible. All right, and then I'll get it in the zoom soon enough. Um, I'm going to head and attach these to my helping hands. Just enough to where I can hold it. Okay. Um, the first thing I'm probably going to solder onto here will be... I think I have pictures of this. Let me double check because I want to make sure that I have everything situated for you all. So I'm going to do this real quick. Make sure everything's laid out. I'm going to first put our target onto our board. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it with the sockets, of course, so I don't burn out the actual integrated circuit itself. And you know, like I said, right now for this, this stream, we're mostly going to be focused on getting it um, working on soldering. Kind of like a part two to our soldering episode, I'm going to use more advanced parts. I'm going to actually try to do a bit of jumper and cable management. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do... It's over here. I'm going to take off the circuit. Boom. And I want to see how many pins we have. I think 16. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16, 14. 14. Um, and I'm going to add it up so that I have enough of this so we don't have the exact 14 that we're going to need. So, 2, 4, 6, 8. Seven. This seems like we have some sevens here. I'm going to set another seven, and then we're just going to connect them to next to each other. Um, cool. So, we're going to use these two. Worry about those guys later. Put them in the dump. 
I have just like a dump of parts that I haven't re uh, organized, but that's kind of how kind of how it is. So I'm gonna put this on here. I'm just gonna lie it wherever for the moment. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna put it within these first two rows here. So, how on the back side they're sets of three. You can kind of see here, here, here. They're still almost grouped by sets of three, just like a white line separating them. I'm gonna put them in these two big rows. So, it's gonna c cover a span of six. And that way, I have a little more space to put other lines underneath to connect to the pen. I'm going to throw this here. And if need be, I can always connect it to another set. I can just put a jumper next to it and say, like, okay, now I've expanded. Let's so scoot it in. All right. Um, so now you can see, like, my tweezers, right? So many parts. Okay. Um, we have these two rows here that is now bending over, but this third row, there's no connection. Nothing that goes here will integrate with the circuit, but say I needed to, I could go underneath, put a jumper from, say, this small hole to the one next to it, then it activates all of that row. Um, so we may have to do that if need be, hopefully not, but if, if so, it's so, this is what it is. Um... You can put that one, and I'm also going to put this one right below it. Cool. This is going to be our socket. We're going to put our chip on. Now, I've mentioned before on the show that um, the hard part to this is when you solder things, you have to flip it over. And of course, if you flip it over, pieces fall out. You're not about to do that. So, what we're going to do to make up for that fact is I'm going to tape it. That is my method. I've seen other methods for how people go about holding their pieces onto their boards. I just use tape because it just makes the most sense. Um, there's all sorts of tape. I have about four different types right now. I also have about four different types of glue, but that's another story for another time. Um, but I've seen other electrical type tape, like electrical tape, there's Kapt Captain, K-A-P-T-O-N, can never pronounce it, but we have that type tape, um, which probably is a bit more preferred for this circumstance, it's a little, like, plastic-ish, um, yeah, so we're gonna just do that to hold it down, so that when I flip it, it doesn't fall out, and I can start soldering, so... I'm going to flip this. I want to make sure I can see the pins. Probably a little hard to see. I can barely see it myself with my naked eye. They're like literally right here where my thumb is grazing over. Boom. Yeah. Very small. Very hard. Kind of hard to see. If I can see it, I will be shocked. I hope. Let me know feedback about the visuals because I am going to have to turn on a light <laughs> um, to see. Let's see if I can turn on a light that's not super bright to where you can still see, but I can also see it. Um, get this connected up decently, and then let me just grab my solder. There's so many, oh, like I said, I'm so excited for when my third desk comes because, like, Desk one is parts. Desk two is more office stuff. I need desk three to be more like extra parts. Or like one needs to be like regular workstation. One needs to be like robotic workstation. One's office space. Eventually I'm just going to get a full lab. But all things in due time. So I'll go ahead and grab this bad boy out of here. Once again, I'm not going to put my goggles on because glasses plus headset plus goggles is a struggle. Um, but I highly suggest you doing so. So off camera, kind of off, can't really see it. 
Just like a scooter in a little um dabber with a sponge. And then just gonna tin the edges we mentioned before. We'll turn the heat down just a little bit because so I don't think it I think the flux or the solder that I'm using doesn't need it to be super high. I'm just going to tin the edges. Push, push, so you see that? And usually this is, from what I recall, drag solder. This is how they do it. They get something like this. Or they'll get tips. There's tips with like wells in the middle. So you put a bunch of solder on the inside of it. Kind of like a uh, those old calligraphy pens that you dip in ink. Those well pens. Um... Stuff like that. So that's how they usually do drag soldering in that sense. Um, we're not going to do that today again. So I'm just going to go and find your pieces and just go like step by step and add solder to all of them. I do like this one because it covers a bit more. And this is where I mentioned, like, this is why we use a socket versus using the actual um, integrated circuit. Partially because if I do the integrated circuit itself, then I can't use it again. Versus if I use, well, yeah. Um, but also because this way... Um, right now, because of the temperature I have it, I do need it to have it a little closer to the solder, as well as the component. But, heat transfers very quickly. Therefore, if I was doing this on the actual integrated circuit itself, I might burn it out. And that is not good. But with it being on the socket, the socket itself doesn't really do anything, except have other metal connectors in it so that the signals can cross um and so it doesn't it's not as affected if it gets hot it'll cool down and then it'll be all right later <laughs> uh versus if i had the integrated circuit on it then it would potentially if it was too hot just burn it out and then I have to buy another one um yeah I'm just going to do this over and over. It doesn't take too long. Um, I'm just trying to keep it relatively neat. And the important thing, let me see I'll stop for a second. Let me see if I can show it. Mm. I'll take it off, see if I can. I can probably take the tape off, actually. So I have at least one side of each one on here enough to where it's not going to fall off anymore. You can kind of see, get it to focus fully. And it's kind of hard to see because the holes are so small. Um, there are certain ones that have a bit more of a gap in them. Um, so you see like some of the ones, some of the ones over here, it seems. Some of them are a bit more filled in like these. Yeah, these guys are a bit more filled in. And then there's others that have a bit more blank space inside the hole. The goal is to completely fill the hole of the circuit so that it's making a full connection. Because, of course, you don't want to add this. The whole point of the solder is it's basically electrical glue, metal glue. Um, and just don't want to fill it to me today. Um, the whole point is so that we can connect pieces while still having a electrical connection. Um, so if we have holes in between the solder and the opponent, then we're not, we're not gluing it together. And the current's not going to flow properly. And so that's when you have to go back and desolder it and put it back on. And uh, it can just make a whole mess. Alongside that, we simultaneously, because what will happen <clears throat> in these cases is when people often see like, oh, well, 
I want to make sure it makes a full connection. So what they do instead is they add too much and they make like a big mountain of solder. And that is exactly what you don't want to do. You kind of want to make it so if you were looking at it, like I said, with the camera we have, we're not going to probably get close enough to see how it is. But you kind of want to make almost a, um, like a pyramid shape of solder on top of it. Um, the dome pyramid. Yeah. These last two I did are perfect, but that's, I don't know if I'm able to get them close enough or get the angle good enough to be able to show exactly what it looks like. And then mind you, again, as I mentioned, be careful doing this. I'm going a little faster just from my experience, as well as, well, just my experience. Um, but make sure you follow safety procedures. Wear your goggles, wear your glasses, have a fan. Um, I don't have a fan. I will not be buying a fan, most likely. But <laughs> I just have my windows open um and like the house fan on stuff like that and then um i would say gloves i don't feel like you really need gloves for this um if you're working with very sensitive like parts that require you to not get like dust and dirt then yeah but i think for this we should be fine just make sure you don't hurt yourself like you'll see after a certain point i'll stop and like extend out because i don't want it to get too close to my hand heat does travel up the solder so while you might not burn yourself per se it is hot and uh you know how humans are when things get hot we flinch and if you flinch while you're holding a device that's 400 degrees celsius um it's no bueno no bueno so i think you got them all i think i got them all i'm gonna take this off Yeah, so it's kind of hard to see again, um, here, we can get it closer, yeah, it's a little difficult, you can kind of see them, as you can see they're all there, hi, some are better than others, some are like, have a few little baby gaps, some are perfectly like, flat, like if you could get it flat, to where you don't even have a pyramid type of solder on top, that's even better. That's more like industrial type of soldering. Um, very hard to do. And then there's some that you'll kind of see have a bit more solder on them than others. For the most part, we're here. It's glued. I flipped it over. I had them falling off. And in this case, then we can get our circuit. Pop. And bio. <laughs> bio. Boom, it's done. Okay, I'm gonna take it back off though, because actually, I'll leave it. Why not? I'm not gonna solder anything else for it. So, that's that piece. Then we're gonna put, um, I'm gonna move the button over next. That's all we're gonna do for the rest of the show. Just on talk, move over pieces of circuitry. I might have to rearrange the, uh, the orientation of some stuff. Um, because there's some things that are up top that are probably we move down to the bottom of the circuit. Because you'll see, I have some components up here. Some components up here. Um, but because of spacing on our board, we may not have enough space to put them up there. Maybe. Um, we'll try. If not, as I said, we'll just move them to a different part. It might require more wiring reworking at the bottom but ultimately it should be okay the important part is just to be conscious of where things are going and that's the really the more that's the really the challenging part of putting things on a proto board is making sure that everything is going where it needs to go um that the current even if you can't see it but knowing the flow of things. Imagine just like a bunch of arrows, you know, like on a flow chart. 
Where do those arrows go? That's what you need to keep track of. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm straightening the legs. So I'm buttons, push buttons, basic ones. The legs are dented in. They're like jointed like that. And that's nice, I guess. I don't know why they do it. Um, but obviously I'm putting them through the hole. And I need to go all the way through. So I need them to be straight. So I'm just kind of, they don't do be perfectly, but I need them just enough to like go where I need them to go. So I'm just adjusting them a little bit. Hopefully it's just sliding where I need it to. Ah, so close. So close. I have to remember to like stay on camera. I have a tendency to like work. Um, when I was building that other robot the whole time, I was like off the desk putting parts together. I was like, Aaliyah, use the desk. That's what it's literally there for. Um, so this push button is on. And instead of using tape, because the legs are already pretty bent, um, I'm just going to bend them in a little bit more. Just a little so where it doesn't fall out when I flip it. So I don't have to use any tape, but it's not going to fall and I can just like speed the process up. Okay, so it is right. It is right here. These four spots. It's, it's really hard to see them, even for myself, because there's just really small, I would say aluminum. I'm just not aluminum. But they're really small, like, you know, silverish looking pieces. And um, our board is really small, goldish looking pieces, and they look very similar. So it's hard to see them. Um, I said if I was doing solder, not solder, surface mount, um, or even just... If it was even any smaller than this, or I really could not see it, I would use the helping hand with the magnifying glass. Um, I'll see if I can pull it out and scooch it over. I don't know if I'm be able to because of angles. But I'm going to try. You can see kind of what that experience is. And then, as I've mentioned before, make sure you have any questions during the chat. In terms of what solder I'm using, what tip, what temperature, tips, tricks, angles, etc. Um, yeah, all that good stuff. So now, the button's on here. I might add a little extra to one of these pieces, so a couple of these. But it looks like they made a decent connection. Um, and then, real quick. I don't think I'll be able to get it because of angling, but I have this magnifier. <laughs> I don't think it's going to get on the camera. Yeah, that magnifying glass has a light on it. So what I can do, um, the only reason I can't is because my camera is on my holding hands. We'll work that out later <laughs> if I can get an appropriate stand. But, um... I would adjust this and just have it right on top. And it has a light so then I can like look from above and have a better view of it with a light up close while it's still not having to hold anything. You know, so just that. Um, then I'm going to add this LED. So this is where it's going to get complicated because now these two are both independent currently on here. But once I start adding other pieces, I need to like, no 100% where they go. Luckily, I took pictures. Um, that LED is not connected to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on. So that's the LED that's on here. Let me move this back out the way. Whoosh. LED that's on here on our board. Green one. These are um, not connected to anything. It's independent. So... I'm going to attempt to squeeze it like right here, but it's going to be very, no, there's other stuff that's go there. I'm going to put it right and put it here, here. I'm going to put it right here um, because previously that's where our 3.3 volt circuit was, but we're not using our 3.3 volts anymore. 
I could add it later, but I'm not going to, honestly. So, I'll try to get this piece up, throw a few more on, and then I'll probably do the rest off camera. Um, but I want to just make sure we can see. So these are independent. Like I said, we're not really going to focus much on them. But for the LED, because we are going to have to put the LED, the resistor, the power, and another piece, that's where I'm going to show kind of how to main um how to focus on the flow of the current that's what i'm looking for so go ahead and get this piece make sure i remember that power is going through our resistor to our positive side and then that we have a jumper that's going to our ground it's going to be very ugly under <laughs> the bottom but it's fine uh, I'm going to lay it out completely on top, get everything situated, and then flip it over. So, if I can scoot it up forward a little more for where I'm going to need it to be. I'm going to just throw it on first. I'm putting it in the middle. I'll put it right here. <laughs> lay out. All right, I'm gonna put it there. Um, doesn't cooperate in terms of the zoom right now. If I can get it close enough. All right. Um, so we got our LED here. So then I'm also gonna get this resistor. It's our two twenty ohm, and I'm gonna connect it to power. I have decided this entire left side, my left side, is going to be power, and the entire right side is going to be ground. So I'm going to make sure I have this from here to a power. I'm going to try to flush it in as flush as possible. Flat. That's how you get neat circuits. Flat. <laughs> and then... I'm going to go underneath and put another jumper at the bottom that's going to go to ground. But for now, I'm not going to worry about it. What I am going to do, I'm not going to be able to see. You'll see it when I flip it over. I'm bending all the wires at the bottom. So when I flip it, and it doesn't always work. Like, if it's long resistors, capacitors, LEDs, they have long legs, partially for this purpose. But if I'm working with, like, pins, um, jumpers, that doesn't always just a case. I have to tape them down. So, I'm going to go ahead, flip this bad boy. What happens if I attach something in the wrong spot and I need to move it? Then I have to desolder it. Um, I don't add too much solder. And as far as why I say don't add too much solder, because if you need to desolder it, if you add a lot, you have to use a little desoldering gun that I showed a while ago, which I hate. <laughs> I, I never can use it. Um, otherwise, you would just get the soldering iron. i probably turn it down a little. Don't know where my flux is. I don't know where my braid, my desoldering braid is right now to show. But you'd have to hold the wick against it. Put the soldering iron on top. Hold it there and it'll soak it up like a paper towel, basically. Um... It'll soak up all of the solder and the piece will fall out. Uh, fall out, quote unquote. Might just have to rip it out, but that's what happened. And I'll probably not reuse that same spot again if I don't have to. And just try to move it over at least one spot because that hole might be burnt out um, or something. Um, always fixable? No. Um, you might burn the component. Because, you know, you're transferring heat when you're putting it on, you're transferring heat when you're taking it off. So there's a chance you'll burn the component. There's a chance you might not be able to get it out. <laughs> I've had times I've soldered something on and I just don't have the skill to get it out. Um, or you might burn the hole too much to where it might not be as capacitive as it was before. And if that's the case, then not. But... This is why I'm like usually try to be 
super careful when I'm soldering on parts because I really don't like to mess up because I don't like to have to do it again. Um, but if I mess up, then I just have to be mindful of it and just notice. And this is why in these cases working proto boards, this is why you do it on here first. Like, if people sit and just do it straight on here, kudos to them. They're, you're proud, you're strong, I believe in you. <laughs> I don't, I'm not that person. I need to do it on this breadboard first so that I know that it works. And once I know that it works here, then usually I can just go piece by piece and just put it in more or less the same position that it was in before, um, depending on the board. Like I said, this board is laid out because of these sets of three, a little different. I could have got a board that was literally laid out exactly like this breadboard, where it's like rows of five, two down here. It would have made it easier because then I could just copy exactly. But this is what I got and it is what it is. So this is what we're rolling with. Um, but yeah, it's not always fixable, but it usually it's, it's not too. It's rare that you'll be in a situation that just can't come be undone at all. Um, so we're going to throw these on real quick. I said you can kind of see that the legs are bent. So I didn't have to worry about taping it down. And this last piece. Yeah, even now, like I said, the heat transfers so fast. I soldered it at the base here, but I touched the edge of the line and I could feel how hot it was. So I said the heat transfers very fast. It's currently at 400 degrees Celsius. Which, of course, in Fahrenheit is a lot more, so it's hot. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, here's another thing. So, I just did it. So, I'm going to talk about what I just did wrong. I'm not going to fix it. I'm just not going to use it and be mindful um, before I put this last piece on. So, I know it's kind of hard to see. Up close. I'll see if I can figure out to get an even better magnetization. Maybe figure out. I wonder if this will work. I'm going to test something real quick. I don't think it will. We're going to try. Who it? No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> I'll test it a different time. We'll see what happens. Um, but so what happened here is. And it, it doesn't matter in this case because I have it along this this long channel. But down here, I have soldered, let's say, on this hole, right? Very hard to see, but there's like some solder connecting these two holes. That is something you almost never want to do. If you're not doing it on purpose, then you shouldn't be doing it. Reason being, if I have, say solder from this line and i believe i said this line was going to be this is my power line right so say i have a, a solder right here on this hole for power and i accidentally overflow or bridge as they call it into a row over here that's just supposed to be independent for some other part that whole row then becomes power because that's where the power is going and then it's bridges over because of course the solder's metal into that row it may if that row is empty you should be fine but if i had a resistor or a capacitor led or even worse a transistor integrated circuit in this row once i put power on this the power goes there and if it's not supposed to i've blown my entire circuit um so that is something to be extremely mindful of is bridging try to be as clean as possible, and that's why you don't add too much solder because it'll overflow from the little space you're giving it into another. And like I said, I did it between two holes that are already connected metal wise um, on our power line over here on the side. So I should be fine because it's just going to connect them and already connect it. But if they weren't, that would be a big problem <laughs> later. Um, so I'm going to do lastly, let's see where we're at on time. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and, because all the other components are the same process, of course, so I'm not gonna stay here the whole time and just purely put all the components. Um, they're the same process, like I said, we've learned how to solder on the show, learned how to move parts, kind of worked a little bit more with that today. 
Um, beyond this, it's just the tedious process of moving and adding. What I'm going to do is add a jumper. So I'm going to double check. So this is our negative side of our LED right here. Um, so we want this to go to ground. So I'll put it in the middle. We're going to put this hole here that's connected to it in this three segment row. And I'm going to connect it all the way to the other side for ground. Now mind you, I haven't connected any power ground lines yet. Um, and actually, I'll do that while we're here. That'll be the last thing I'll do. I'll connect this ground wire and then I'll connect power and ground. Obviously, I'm not going to plug it in. I could, actually I could plug it in and it'll be I. Right. We'll do that. Yeah, since it's an independent circuit, I'll um, connect power and ground. I'll add the battery, see what happens. <laughs> um, so lastly, I'm going to add a wire to connect this to ground. Hopefully this is long enough. Oh, perfect. Oh, I love when it works perfect. So I'm just put it in the same row as the negative side of my LED and connect it to a hole on our line for ground. And actually, don't want to do it on this side. Mm. No, I'm going to do it on the other side because I want to see it. Yeah, so instead, I'm going to put it on the top. This up there, so you see that brown line is going from our negative side to our ground. Just gonna add a little bit of tape to hold it. Mm. All right, I'm gonna solder that on real quick. And all right, so you got that. So that should be all set. Then what you usually do from here is you'll cut the excess wire off. You don't have to, but it just looks clean and it makes it so it doesn't get in the way. So I have all these. If you look here real quick, all this like extra. So that's when you just go in with your wire cutters and you just snip everything off that you don't need. Boom. So now we're looking clean. You know, we got all this stuff on the back side in terms of you can see all the solder, but if you flipped it over, it's just, oh, I'll take the tape off. <laughs> and we have this. So it looks a lot cleaner already than like on our brick board. Um, that's the purpose of this. So I'm going to head real quick and I'm going to add this as our power and ground and i'm gonna connect them i'll connect them on the bottom doesn't matter i guess for these because they're loose wires yeah so i'm gonna connect them here and then what we'll do is i'll connect the battery and we will see if it works If it works, we'll call it for now. And like I said, I'll come back later and finish it up. Um, and show off, finish it up off camera and then show what the finished result looks like. That way we can work on some other robots in the future. Um, and then maybe in the future we'll come back. We'll definitely use this again, this board. Once I get it, we'll be working. This will probably be like our default board from going on. Like if we can get it working, any Arduino related things, we will use this board rather than the standard like pre-built one. So why not? I mean, if we're going to build it, we might as well use it, right? Well, let's do this real quick.
Right, we got that. I'm gonna hit snip off the excess here and here. Cool, so that should be that. There we go. So now, I'm very I'm only scared to connect stuff, <laughs> but we're gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna connect this, and hopefully, if it works, this LED will come on. If it doesn't work, then no. So at least if it does, we know that for one, our power and ground lines work. Oh no, I have to do one more thing real quick. Um, and then we should be good. And this other last thing is noticing these vertical lines. You'll see there's a gap here in the middle. So it'll power up this top piece, but it's not gonna go down here. So I'm gonna add two more jumpers real quick just to connect um, those lines. And I'm gonna do this underneath because it's not like something I need to really visually see up top and know where the things are connecting. This is just like, a maintenance thing to be like, oh yeah, I should probably do that. So I'm gonna just do it real quick. And then we'll probably wrap up today. I'm gonna put these on the bottom, solder them up top. Um I'm almost there. I've seen people try to connect the uh, lines with pure solder. You technically can do that. Like you can just run a line of solder down, but I highly don't suggest it because solder melts, of course, for one. So, two, it's not as it's not built for that purpose. Like just use what is made for that to do it. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So. What I would do is I'm going to do this super fast and I'm plugging our battery and hopefully we have power. If not, then that means either something's not fully connected somewhere or running out of battery. Yeah, it's not insulated. It'll melt. You'll melt it. You'll burn yourself. Um, there's no protection from the elements. Electrical elements. It had wire ties, I guess, but I mean, sure, there's always workarounds, but sometimes it's just better to choose what something is built for. You know, there's a saying, don't break what's not broken, or don't fix what's not broken. <laughs> yeah, don't fix what's not broken. So if you have a perfectly good wire or jumper, just, just use that. Call it a day. Sometimes it's more about the path of least resistance than it is about Surely making something brand new. The reinventing the wheel. It's unnecessary sometimes. Cool. Alright, so those came out pretty clean. It would seem. To me, anyway. They're not like giant mounds of solder. They're pretty flat. And it keeps a pretty good, clean look to it. Hello, Galactic Bacon. Welcome, welcome. We're just wrapping up. We're trying to test this out real quick. See if we got at least one working component on here. We're not going to get everything, so it'll take me a while to get everything transferred over. And make sure it's like in the proper positioning. But for now, we should hopefully be able to get some current flow. Let's see. 
Let's go find out. <laughs> go find out. I'm gonna hold it up here because I don't want to touch it. <laughs> I'm only fit to chicken when it comes to my own work, even though it's like pretty sure I'm, it'll work and it'll be fine. But I'm always like, just in case, especially after last week when I burnt the LED. I mean, worst case, I'll burn this one too. <laughs> it, it's like, well, whatever. But I'm pretty sure I got it all set up properly. So I'm gonna plug it up and see. Ooh, look at that. Oh yeah, luckily these LEDs nowadays are not glass because when they used to be glass, they would literally explode. And uh, dangerous to say the least, but which is why, because they're plastic, I'm taking a little more thing and I'm not. Um, yeah, what probably happened to when last week when we did our show and I burnt out mine, I put the resistor between the LED and the ground. So I put it on the output, not the input. So it was restricting what was going out, but not what was coming in. So it was getting way too much power in, and then not enough was getting pushed out. And so it blew up or burnt out. Um, so luckily, yeah, <laughs> it's, and that's the thing about this is why I always suggest to people putting it on our breadboard first so that we can make sure that it works and doesn't well, because once it's on the proto board and it's set, then it's like so much more work to replace them and all of that. Yeah, LEDs are like a couple cents. Resistors are a couple cents. So it's not like it's a big cost, but it's best practice to practice other places and make sure it works beforehand. Um, yeah, so it looks like we have it working. I think we're good. I said I always want to test it on little things because if I test it, like, let me just put power straight to the integrated circuit. Then if I blew it up, then I have to get another circuit. In. It also isn't horribly expensive, maybe like five bucks, if even. But um, it's better to just not do that. So now we know we have a good flow. We know that like our soldering capabilities are good enough to where the current is going in through here. Um, it's going down here. It's going through that jumper underneath. To this entire line, down to resistor, through the resistor, through the LED, and then out to this brown line, and then back up to our ground, and it cycles through continuously. We have power. So, I <laughs> um, said I probably won't show the rest of me putting the parts on this just because of timing, because um, I will be here all day. Trying to do well, maybe not all day, but um, it would probably take me another hour, honestly, just just because of how precautious I am with putting part. If I was just like, let's just do it, and just throwing it on, but I definitely don't want to mess it up because I don't want to desolder things and move them and have the circuit all kind of crazy looking. Um, so I'd rather take my time moving everything. Um, so what I'll do. Is when I finish working on it, I'll record the process. It's, it's always like, that's the thing about working in electronics, really most tech, is be careful, then be perfect. <laughs> so safety is always first because if you're not safe, there are repercussions and they could be anywhere from mild to severe. We don't want to deal with that. So um, I will probably, when I work on this off camera, record it. And either next show or the show after, somewhere in there, I'll maybe play like a quick little highlights clip of how I went about finishing off, adding the components, a quick test, make sure everything works properly. Um, yeah, so that being said, I'm going to wrap this up today. Yeah, like a time lapse, just kind of what I'm thinking. Either time lapse or just like a bunch of cuts of it. Um, Something like that. We'll see. We'll see what my editing skills say. <laughs> I'm not an editor, but I could figure it out, I'm sure, if I tried. So, let me do that. Um, so, and then, like I said, next week, I will show some version of how I finished this. Maybe a quick demo of it um, once it's all set up. And then beyond that, like I said, we'll work on my other robot, whose name is yet to be named. Just this kiddo. Move my soldering iron. This kiddo here. Let me tilt the 
to work on this guy. This gal said she. Um, next week. This big old beast of a robot. <laughs> um, I will show you in a second. Just a quick overlap of what it is. I want to make sure I don't have space. Um, so this is a hexapod robot. And she, I was going to call her spider. Technically, she has six legs, not eight legs. But she's a beast of a robot. Biggest one I've made, most complex. Let me move the zoom because we don't need it. Um, yeah, so we'll be working on this. Um, I didn't show the hardware build because I forgot to record the whole thing. But I'll talk through it next week as we work on it. Um, lots of lots of capabilities, but it, the main thing is the Raspberry Pi. So what will most likely happen is next week we'll do a Raspberry Pi episode and learn how to set it up, connect it, etc. And the week after is when we'll actually go into programming this robot and trying to get you know power and it's to move his legs. Right now it won't stand up because it's too heavy. It has no resistance. So we can get that, get it standing up. So we'll play with this robot um, for a few weeks, have some fun, and then we'll work on... Um, after that, we'll probably work on this one. I'm sure after working on the big one, working on this little one will not be that hard either. So we got some options, and then from there, I can tell everyone... Reach out to me. You can look at my Facebook uh, page, my GitHub. You can reach out to me on the Discord at make.sc slash join Discord, um, which is the Make School Community Tech Channel. Or you can just message me directly on Instagram and you can suggest to me <laughs> ice cream truck. You can suggest to me different robots that maybe you've seen online, different kits, or just things that you want to learn about, talk about, see on the show. And I'll try to get the parts, get the robots, learn about the technology, and showcase it here so we can, you know, all work to, like, improve our skills and just have a fun time, like, playing with robots, because I think it's fun. So, that being said, did anyone last minute comments, questions, concerns for me? before we decide to wrap up today's show. Listen to the ice cream truck song in the background. I might have to hunt them down if I can. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Yes, yes, and Tech Topical. Let me throw that out there. Tech Topical is about approximately 30 minutes, hosted by Brian, another mixed school uh, ambassador on our star team. His show is similar to mine, in which we talk about tech. Mine is a bit more hardware focused. His is a bit more software and or uh, developing technologies, like things that happen in the news, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, um, big tech companies, building cities, things like that. So make sure to stick around for his show as well. Otherwise, you know, come back next week. Same time, same place, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern and all the time zones in between. Brian is your favorite. Oh, I wound it. I wound it. <laughs> Hopefully one day I get up to Brian's level. He has that like a spokesman voice. I'm just I just the girl who built robots. <laughs> but we're all working on it. So thanks for coming for the first time. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you next week as well and we can work on some more cool robot stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um with that being said, like I said, same time next week, every week. We'll see you here next time. Make sure to follow me in other places. Reach out to me and get more updates as we go. With the, and, uh, yeah. So with that being said, thank everybody for coming to the stream. Um, have a good rest of your Saturday. And I'll see you next week. Bye.